why am I suggesting that we go through all these different steps and exercises to learn about our color and to become fluent? We have our color samples. We have our enamel. We can try to imagine what each enamel looks like. Isn't that enough? Why do I need to do more? Do I need to know more than these colors to become fluent? And do I need to become fluent so that I can be creative? If I want to make a piece that's got colors that turn out the way I want them to look, I've got to do more than just know what my colors look like. Not only am I putting colors together in the cells, but I'm putting cells together next to each other. It's kind of like being a mosaic artist cutting different tiles, except that we're making our own tiles. We need to know how to make the color for our tiles. We need to know how to put the color into different shapes so that we can have different tile shapes. And then we need to figure out how to combine and organize our different color tiles to create something that we want. And then we need to figure out how to put what we've made with something else so that it all looks good or it looks the way we want it to look. That's why I make something like this so that I can start to see what the colors look like next to each other. I can start to see what the cells look like next to each other. I can start to think about what's possible so I don't have to just copy what I see on the internet from other enamel artists. I can create my own imagery and I can start to see what I like. And when I know what I like and I know what I love, then I know what to practice so that it can become a part of me. It becomes part of my vision. It becomes part of my vocabulary and I become fluent and I can use this and I can know how to use my muscle memory to make these so that when I think about putting something like this into something like this, I don't have to try to figure out how to make it. I can start to think about design questions like how many or how big or what the background is going to be or is it going to become too much of a focal point. But I need to know how to make these. I need to become fluent with the process of making these. I need to find the things that I like and then I can start to practice and then I can start to put it into pieces. It's kind of like I'm starting out with my color samples and I'm thinking about this wonderful piece that's going to make me really happy and I'm trying to go from here to here and I can't figure out why it doesn't work. But the answer is there's a giant gap right here and I call it the gap. It's all the things that I don't know or all the things that confuse me between the color samples and this wonderful piece that I'm imagining or just the idea of the piece that I'm imagining. And this is simply a big mess. And I got to get dirty and I got to make bad stuff and I got to try things. I need to put colors next to each other and I need to figure out how to make design elements with different materials. And I need to make mistakes and I need to repeat and I need to practice. That's what this gap is. And this is the stuff that we don't learn about or that we're not taught that we need to know. This is where we spend most of our time. It's not doing this. This feels like a chore for most people. I get a lot of students that don't even want to do this. How could you make this if you can't do that? But then somehow we think, well, I've made my color samples. Now I can do this. But that's not how it happens. That's not life. That's not reality. The reality is most artists, no matter what they're doing, spend all their time in here doing lots of different things. And then every once in a while, something pops out and it's really wonderful. Maybe part of the gap, you have things that are kind of wonderful, or there's a part of it that's kind of wonderful, or you have an idea and you think the idea is wonderful. What we need to spend our time doing is becoming fluent and muscle memory so that we can do this. But we can't do this without this. Accepting that you're going to make a mess. Accepting that you're going to be confused. Accepting that you're going to make bad stuff. That's part of your gap. Try to let go of liking. Try to let go of thinking, why isn't it good enough? The fact is, you haven't spent enough time in here, or if you've spent a lot of time here, you're probably asking the same questions. Maybe you're only asking technical questions. 
Maybe you're ignoring the expression questions. Maybe you're spending all your time on design questions when you should be spending some time on technical questions or questions about science. That's all part of this gap here. That's why I created this class, so that I can help guide you into the gap and help you feel not so lost when you're in it. Because that's part of being in the gap, is feeling afraid and being frustrated and being discouraged and wanting to give up and wanting to do something you already know or wanting to learn a new technique or wanting Ricky to tell you the answer. That's all the negative feelings and fears that are part of your gap that you've got to manage to get to here. That's what all the exercises and the different lessons are all about. Helping you feel more comfortable in this really uncomfortable gap.